Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. The start of the new year, 2018, I'm about to review a small sci-fi horror film that came out in March of 1988. And I just bought this recently, last week, uh, called simply Pulse. It's a movie about what was it like if all of the electricity that we have in our homes suddenly turns evil. Yeah, it has a stronger pulse of electricity that just terrorizes everyone throughout the households of, of Los Angeles. Uh, the suburban home of Los Angeles, that is. Well, that's what happened to um, David's family. And David, of course, is played by Joey Lawrence, who's been best known for shows like Give Me a Break, you know, with his brother Matthew, who was also in the movie, too. He later went on to do the TV series Blossom. He's always saying, whoa! Yeah, that's his catchphrase. And then he went on to do other stuff, like Brotherly Love, also with his brothers, uh, Matthew and Andrew. And then he also did um, shows like uh, Marissa and Joey, you know, with Marissa Joan Hart from Clarissa Explains It All and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, that's her. Joey Lawrence has always been this popular back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. He's one of the biggest fame um, on teen cover magazines, <laughs> such as Tiger Beat. Uh, this movie also stars uh, Cliff D. Young, who's been known for doing films like uh, Secret of Meyer, as well as Flashback with Dennis Hopper and Kiefer Sullivan. It's a very underrated comedy. And also um, did Flight of the Navigator, uh, which is a great movie, 1986. And also did one of the worst adaptations in my opinion from a Stephen King novel called The Tommy Knockers, yeah, the miniseries. Yes, and he was an unlikable character in that film. <laughs> Take my word for it. And then you also got Roxanne Hart uh, from Highlander. Yeah, and she was very good here too. She's kind of like an 80s Amy Adams if you think about it. Yeah, she, she's very attractive. Uh, this is a movie that's not to be confused with the Japanese horror film that came out in the early 2000s, which later had an American remake with Kristen Bell yeah, from the TV series Veronica Mars. And I know she went on to do movies like um, Hit and Run, which I hated. But he also did the voice of Anna in the movie Frozen. Disney's Frozen, as we all know. She also, did the, she also went on to do um, the underrated Astro Boy from 2009. Yeah. Not many people talk about this film anymore. Uh, although, granted though, they used to play this on HBO uh, back when I was a kid. I remember seeing it a long time ago, but I haven't seen it since. And I've been trying to find some clips everywhere, here and there. I try to find the movie on TV, but it's hardly ever played. Although I think IFC might have played it. That was the last time I saw it. And it had been released on DVD, which had a different cover art. But this is the first time that's released on Blu-ray by Mill Creek. And they used this cover art, which that's supposed to be... Uh, Roxanne's heart as a stepmother getting electrocuted. Uh, yeah, you can tell that she's wearing a, a negligee right here. It's not in the movie, keep that in mind. But there is a scene in the movie where, yes, something bad does happen to her, and I'm going to get to that review. Um, but it's a very nice um, Blu ray cover art, which is actually taken from the VHS tape from RCA Columbia Pictures Home Video. So, for those who have seen the VHS tapes, or as, as well as the laser disc and even the movie poster, this is what it looked like. And you can even see on the spine right here and on the back, 
which is basically an updated version from the DVD. So there you go. And <laughs> it's also on this cover as well. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can move it a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Perfect. Yeah. So let's get to the review. It stars Cliff D. Young, Roxanne Hart, Joey Lawrence, along with his brother Matthew Lawrence, Charles Tyner, Dennis Redfield, Robert Romanis, Myron Healy, Michael Ryder, Gene Sinier, Terry Bieber, Ray Noberg, and Tim Russ. It's written and directed by Paul Golding, who's been known for working with George Lucas, since he's best friends with him, with a short film called Herbie. He later wrote the screenplay for the movie Beat Street. It's a breakdancing film from the 80s, yeah, 1984. And he went on to do another film that he was the executive producer. It came out in 2014 called 2000 Days on Earth. That was the last film that he did so far. The movie begins when we meet an 11 year old boy named David Rockland, who's played by Joey Lawrence, who decided to stay over at his father's house, Bill Rockland, who's played by Cliff the Young, along with his new wife, because he's also divorced, named Ellen Rockland, who's played by Roxanne Hart. It's David's new stepmother, because he basically lives with his mother all the way from Colorado. At first he was down on the dumps uh, and very shy because apparently he wanted to hang out with his friends during the summer, but he couldn't. But then he figured, what the heck, he wants to spend time with his father by going out to uh, a Los Angeles Dodgers game and just have fun and do whatever they want or whatever they could. Unfortunately, Bill was very busy most of the time. You know, he had a business meeting that he had to attend to yeah, at his job, so he basically never spent that much time with David. But of course, Ellen is there, so sometimes she, you know she goes out with Bill. Other times, um, she'll stay over. Of course, David has uh, surprisingly a race car bed. Yeah, his bedroom is definitely uh, put up very neatly. Looks very nice. It even has uh, the road of, of all these race cars everywhere uh, on the walls. So it's a great mural wall that they use. I love I love how they decorated it. So they they even rented uh, a movie which turned out to be Starman, the 1984 film by John Carpenter, which had Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen. It's a great movie, by the way. So that that explains all the clips that you see. Um, so they were hoping that David would actually watch the movie after watching a Dodgers game. So during that night, he watched the Dodgers game while drinking some Nestle Quick. To all of a sudden, he's beginning to see something suspicious that's going around the entire house. At this rate, the TV, where once we went inside the TV, you see a lot of those um, electrical circuits that's inside, and something was going completely wrong that's going directly from the telephone poles. As you see, all these uh, electrical pulse, you know, going by, which actually went directly from the next door neighbor's which is an old man living there uh, across the street that's already been boarded up and we begin to find out what happens to the old man which actually happened at the beginning of the movie that he actually got killed I mean people thought he was crazy because he started uh, smashing things uh, at night but when Bill and Ellen have found out about that earlier we begin to find out that he has been electrocuted inside the kitchen 
Well, anyway, uh, David suddenly uh, spotted the TV. He noticed that um, there was some uh, some crazy pulse that they went into the TV that's on the screen. He's beginning to switch channels to see what was going on. Uh, then he turned it off. He went back to bed, and then, until he started hearing some some strange noises that's actually coming from the TV where it started to show that uh, that picture on the tube that has all these lines everywhere, all these horizontal lines moving around and it was going crazy but he begins to hear the sound of a, um, a home shopping club uh, that's been heard on TV yeah, you can hear the audio and he begins to wondering what was going on because inside we begin to see all the circuits being put together you see like that you even see that big uh, bubble a silver bubble that suddenly uh, multiplies into different forms so that way it suddenly uh, controls those circuits and then he went to check to see what was going on in the uh, the laundry mat, where inside the dryer, he he began to check on the bottom where there's um, the gas spark, and then suddenly it shoots like a small ball of fire that's almost burning his face, and that is until the parents show up. And he, he begins to warn them what was going on. And that's where he got really frightened. This is when David suddenly feels paranoid because there's something going wrong in the house. Um, Ellen basically discovered that, that the TV was not turned off. I mean, it was already on completely. So then they had to call a TV repairman to find out what's happening. And... Basically, you know, he doesn't know what's going on and how this went by, but it might be, might have been something going on with the electrical circuits and the outlets that's happening. That's when he begins to uh, investigate the house. He begins to look up uh, up onto the uh, the telephone poles because maybe that's probably where it went straight directly to him. He meets. Um, the kid next door named Stevie, who's played by Matthew Lawrence, is basically talking about the old man that lives uh, across the street. About who is this guy and and how this neighbor got so crazy is is beyond us. And I know he always keeps saying, it's he looks bad and all that. <laughs> Of course, he also plays with um, G.I. Joe uh, action figures, too. So, um, and even though David was just, you know, going around um, on a skateboard, you know, with a bunch of kids uh, next door, but, of course, you know, he wasn't paying attention. So then, suddenly, uh, the, the next day, he begins to investigate the house. He begins to check to see what's going on inside. And that's when he meets Old Man Holger, who's played by Charles Tyner, who begins to explain about what's going on with the electricity that's happening. And But basically he, he explains to uh, David that there, there was an incident that was quite like this, where there was voices in the wires. So this was a warning on David that that pretty soon it's going to start spreading around their house. So that's when David decided to warn uh, Bill, along with Ellen, that there's going to be a lot of strange things happening with the strong electrical pulse that's going to f affect the, the entire house. It's going to start destroying everything in sight. Uh, but Bill, however, doesn't believe him. That's understandable. Because he thought it was just mostly accidents that's happening around. Um, but Ellen suddenly begins to listen to David because now 
she's being suspicious too about this whole thing. It only gets worse when after he was talking to the old man Holger, yeah, because, you know, he just came over doing some repairs and all that, uh, working along with the guys. She began to take a shower, and this is one of the scariest shower scenes ever on screen. If you think, uh, if you think the scene in Psycho, the original Psycho, that is, not the remake, if you thought that was the scariest shower scene that we got, well, this movie had one of the scariest of them all was when um, Ellen was taking a shower a nice warm shower until all of a sudden the water heater started to go out of control and that's when the hot water begins and in full blast that it even blast the, the sink in the kitchen when Bill and David have found out about it when they were turning it on and this is when Ellen just screams for help Ellen was stuck inside the shower. Uh, she tried to turn it off. She couldn't. She tried to open the shower door. Um, she was stuck. She couldn't open it. So David tried to open it, um, but it was he was burning hot. So then Bill just came over, took the lamp, and just threw it all the way into the door just to get her out of there. And they turn off the the shower suffering severe burns all over her body. So she was taken to the hospital on an ambulance. And apparently she's okay, even though she's suffering some burns. So she's going to be in there for, for maybe a, maybe one week or so until she recovers. So then Bill decided to investigate inside the house while uh, David decided to stay next door um, next door to the neighbor's house just, just so he can be safe um, he begins to check to see what was going on and how is it happening when is it happening I mean and where did it, did it came from so he, he was checking the TV to see if everything's okay he put in um, he pressed play on the VCR which Ellen actually did earlier yeah, before she took a shower because they wanted to see if it works unfortunately she had to pay uh, sixty dollars because she forgot to return the tape yeah they, they didn't watch the rest of it um, so everything was fine but it only gets worse because then he begins to notice uh, a lot of weird things started to happen that's when the that's when the pulse of electricity started to grow stronger more intelligent and aggressive than ever before so now so David suddenly uh, came by just to find out uh, where his father is because the father you know, Bill just went downstairs to the basement uh, he saw that the, uh, the, ch the saw was on and there was a bolt that's right near it and, and it hits his forehead it was bleeding got knocked out unconscious until he tried to find a way to escape by using the axe and he tries to axe his way out of there because he was already trapped inside uh, David just um, got out of there because he found out that his room was on fire yeah once he was inside and he was trying to escape trying to get out of there I tried to warn the he tried to call for help um, when he opens uh, the kitchen window that, that, that has a gate inside by the way and yeah he broke the he actually broke the window but then the shard of glass actually fell on David's hand so they try to go upstairs and try to get something you need and then then Bill finally came, saved his son, tried to escape. Yeah, once again throwing the the lamp on the window. They got out of there as soon as they can, and then he brought in the axe and decided to chop down the telephone poles, and it fell all the way down into the house. 
burning everything in sight. Yeah, once, even though the cops came by, you know, they were about to Fred and Bill, almost ready to shoot him. But yeah, he froze. So then, um, after that, they they left. They Bill and, and David had been together inside the police car, just taken to um, taken to another place. Well, they maybe maybe go visit um, Ellen, see if she's okay, or maybe stay over to another place, see what happens. So, so then the movie ends. Um, for its time, back in 1988, um, this was a pretty well-made um, horror movie. It's PG-13, and back when PG-13 actually made horror films this good. I know people say this is a silly plot. Indeed it may be. But hey, you know, I, I love Maximum Overdrive because that's, there's, that movie has a similar approach. Where they actually use uh, electronics that suddenly moves by themselves and so they kills everyone um, and that's basically the case here but unfortunately except for just one person and that was the old man next door so there's no body count um, they just basically got hurt yeah Bill got hurt Ellen got hurt and so is David yeah uh, there was one scene in the movie where David was was actually trying out um, was just inside the garage and inside Bill's car, you know, just fooling around till suddenly it took it suddenly went out of control with the uh, the electrical uh, garage uh, door. He, he turns it on and suddenly gets stuck. So he was trying to find a way to get out of there, and a lot of smoke was happening everywhere throughout the entire uh, garage and. He kept coughing. He's trying to find a way to to not have the smoke go straight into the to the car. So he was trying to uh, he was trying to turn it off, but then he wanted to escape. He, he had a hard time doing it until he finally got out of there, and and then the parents arrived, yeah, safely. Yeah, pretty messed up. Um, the movie had a great cast: uh, Cliff D. Young, Roxanne Hart. And Joey Lawrence did a great job. It even proves that they were very likable characters. You know, we didn't get your typical, you know, parents who, who basically act like assholes because they don't believe in them. Uh, especially uh, Bill, for example, because even though he doesn't believe in what the old man says, it's understandable because he thought that there were some accidents that's happening. He basically thought that both uh, Ellen and David were paranoid. Well, they were hoping they leave so they don't get hurt. I mean, especially David, too. I mean, he wanted to leave really bad because he was afraid this was going to happen to him. And that's always the case. Yeah. And Old Man Holger, was, uh, was played by Charles Tyner, was very good, too. So, yeah. Because, you know, nowadays, even in horror films, we do get all these... Uh, you know, creepy old man, you know, talks about all these weird stories about what happened. And he was very good at that. Um, I know Charles Tyner's been in other films where he plays those type of roles that he got. Um, but he was very good here, and, and I love how he had that interesting dialogue that he, that he basically talks about, especially involving his wife, because his wife died because of a similar incident that happened during the that might have been the electricity that's that's happening um, it doesn't fully explain how the electrical pulse happened but that's always the case because I know there was the opening of the film where they, they show um, the power plant and and there's actually lightning that's involved so, so it might have been the case like it might have been thunder and lightning that might have had the effect of of the electricity that's <laughs> that's going out of control at this point but it just happens somehow so that that's always a plus here so it's it definitely remains a mystery right here uh, 
And the movie was not a big hit at the box office when it came out. Uh, mostly because it came out... I think it came out either the first weekend or possibly um, the same weekend as another film from Columbia Pictures called Vice Versa. Yeah, with Fred Savage and Judge Reinhold. Yeah, I love that movie. It's also released on Blu-ray by Mill Creek. And hopefully I'll pick that up um, someday. But either way, um, but it definitely had a cool following when it came out. Um, they were hoping this movie was going to be a hit, mostly because of Joey Lawrence uh, and his brother Matthew. Because after, after all, they were the stars of the TV show Give Me a Break. Yeah, the TV show with Nell Carter. I love the cinematography that they went for. Yeah, the cinematographer was done by Peter Lyons uh, Cholester. So he was very good at uh, using all these shots. That these close-up shots of the circuits that's inside, that's very well done. And also um, some great editing by Gib uh, Joff. Yeah. In fact, considering um, it's only 91 minutes, uh, it does go pretty fast, but it can also be a little slow for its pacing, so it works. And Paul Golding who wrote and directed this movie, did a great job. I mean, he definitely knows how to write some great material right here um, when he did this film. Also has a wonderful score by Jay Ferguson. He's been known for doing uh, other scores for other TV shows and movies that I could think of. But this score actually had something that definitely sounds more powerful than ever before. So it really works. Um, it definitely has the energy that they pulled into that makes it scary. And quite honestly, this is a pretty frightening movie. In fact, I think when I was a kid when I saw this movie, I was actually pretty frightened myself. Like, like this is one of those movies where, yeah, they, they really know what they were doing because the movie itself looks pretty real. See, they didn't use CGI back then when they shot this film. They used a lot of practical effects and... A lot of visuals that they put into that you can tell that it looks real. Uh, I even love the shot uh, where you see the, uh, the the TV screen. It has all these horizontal lines, you know, moving around like it was scanning, and it was even scanning David too on that shot. Uh, that that was perfect right there. The way they did it, um, you, you could tell they use a lot of uh, electrical devices and all those other. A lot of stuff. They probably use computers too to actually create these shots. Yeah, actual computers that is. But everything was all done in um, a lot of uh, fascinating special effects they had to use. So that's got to be a lot of hard work too that they had to work on for its six million budget too. Yes, this movie was at six million dollars for its budget at the time. Nowadays, it could be the equivalent to even more than the six million. It'll probably go up to like, like fifty million at this point, maybe, maybe sixty or so. That's the equivalent of of a mall. Yeah. Um, but it only made like forty thousand three hundred ninety-seven hundred dollars, so it didn't do very well. Um, but anyway, it's a great movie. Really enjoyed it. I really miss um, horror films like this nowadays. Because every time we get horror films in recent years, it's always you know the same thing. We always get those found footage movies. We get these unlikable characters. Um, or sometimes we just get actual horror movies. And it, they always have a bunch of dumb characters. A lot of CGI that's not well done. I mean, hey, don't get me wrong, though. I do love CGI, but I don't like the ones that are terrible. So th that's for sure. Yeah, and plus, um, it got mixed reviews when it came out in theaters. Granted, though some people think it was just silly. You know, they thought it was ridiculous, but not at all. I thought it was well done, well paced, great characters, and... It was enjoyable. Just sad that it's 
considered to be underrated over the years. So, all I can say is, it's definitely the ultimate shocker right there. And there was other films that inspired this, like uh, Ghost in the Machine, which is another underrated film that stars Karen Allen, as I just mentioned before, and um, as well as Chris Mulkey. So it's a pretty underrated thriller. And then I know there's other films like Shocker and uh, House Free, which is known as The Horror Show. And, and even before this, and there was Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> um, there were other films too, as I could think of. It involves uh, electricity and all this other stuff that happens. But this one was actually well done when it comes to doing a horror movie about electricity. Because think of how much energy crisis we're getting, especially in Southern California that I'm from. Yeah, because because I'm born in Los Angeles and. And Los Angeles is basically what the city, you know, goes for. <laughs> and I know we had to deal with um, energy crisis ourselves when, you know, even during the the 90s and 2000s uh, by California. And I know the fact that it costs us much. But what can we do? Well, anyway, uh, check this movie out. Um, it's enjoyable. It's worth it. So it's definitely scary. So I give Pulse four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.